Monday, June the 15th, 2020, meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let everyone introduce themselves on the committee and staff and Steve Everett on the committee and. Yep, um, and I'm Meredith Crandall, the staff for the committee. And I'm Mike Miller. I'll be trying to operate the uh, admitting people and taking questions in the chat room. Okay, and Meredith, do you wanna review the uh, meeting procedures? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do a share screen so that anybody who's watching via ORCA can see, uh oh, I just want to share one thing. Um, so they can see the access information in case they're wanting to log in. Um, so due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and pursuant to Addendum 6 to Executive Order 01-20 and Act 92, the Design Review Committee is authorized to meet electronically. Um, therefore, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, um, in accordance with the temporary amendments to open meeting law, the Design Review Committee is providing public access to the meeting by hosting a video conference meeting, including both video and telephone access options through the Zoom portal. All members of the committee have the ability to communicate at the same time during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to listen and if desired participate in this meeting in real time. To do that, um, you can either join the Zoom meeting at this link here, anybody who's watching via ORCA. Um, it's also another option is to call into the meeting at 929-205-6099 and plug in this meeting ID and password. I will be leaving this up while I'm reading through this. Um, we previously gave notice to the public of the information for accessing this meeting through posting of our agenda. The instructions are also provided on the city's website at this pending applications link here. Um, if anybody has a problem accessing the meeting while they're in the Zoom uh, portal, you can, or Otherwise, you can either email the meeting moderator, Mike Miller, at mmiller at montpelier-vt.org. And then if you're in the Zoom portal and you're having problems, you can message Mike through the chat function in Zoom. Um, when, when you actually log into the meeting to participate, either via telephone or through the Zoom portal, um, you're going to have an opportunity to tell the moderator which applications you're wishing to comment on. And when the chair announces that the time for public comment on that application arrives, the moderator will unmute members of the public based on the order you submit your intent to, to comment. Um, if you're interested in speaking on a matter and didn't say you would like to speak previously on that particular application, please raise your hand if you're on video or you can uh, um, unmute you, mute yourself and state your name or you can use the chat function um, to reach out to Mike and city staff will add you to the queue. Um, once the chair has recognized you to participate, if, especially if you're a member of a public versus an applicant, um, then the moderator will unmute your microphone um, and you'll be free to provide questions or comments aiming to keep those initial comments to two minutes. Um, DRC members will have an opportunity to respond or ask questions of you and the applicant may also have an opportunity to respond. Tonight, it doesn't look like we have any members of the public so far, we just have applicants. Um, but if anybody watching out on Orca is interested, they can come in. Um, after you finish speaking, your microphone will be muted. Again, this applies to applicants and public, public parties that are interested. Um, and the chair will then call the next person to speak. Um, if you're a member of the public, you can you know, speak again later, but we're gonna try and keep things muted. When you're not actually speaking, if at all possible, it helps reduce people talking over each other, interference from background noise. Um, in the event the public is unable to access the, this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair, Steve. Okay, to, mo to move forward, 
Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Oh, you got to unmute yourself, Martha. I move to approve the agenda. This is Martha. Do I hear a second? Okay, all in favor, speak your name. Martha. Hannah. Stephen. Okay, we can move forward to the first applicant, which is for 107 State Street, owner John Russell and applicant Carolyn Earl. Is Carolyn there? Uh, Robin is. Robin, uh, oh, sorry. You, there we go. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Robin Freeman. I'm uh, Caroline's law partner. Uh, so I don't really have anything to say beyond what's in the application. We're replacing the sign outside because the name of the firm changed. We're doing as best we can to keep the sign uh Coloring, size, everything is close to what's on the building right now. Uh, it's just really the, the lettering that's going to change. Um, so I'm just going to scroll down just so the public can see as well um, to, here we go. This is a good representation of what this is going to look like. Um, and this is the, for anybody following along in the full meeting packet, um, this is on page... 12 of the meeting packet. And this is um, the actual look of the sign is exactly the same as something that's shown earlier in the meeting packet, but this one has installation details from the sign manufacturer about um, the, you know, how, how far out it's going to stick the, um, how far off the building it will sit um, and the style of um, installation and location. Oh, I'm really tired of this. Um, Robin, this is Martha. Um, it Martha. indicates that your new sign is going to be 95 and a half inches. Do you know how large the existing sign is? Uh, according to the um, sign application that was filled out years ago when that one was approved, it's the same size. That's okay. What we're for. Okay, great. Thank you. It, it must have been a change because our package shows the, the length of the sign at 92 inches. So I'm assuming that's been corrected. Uh, Steve, it's a few pages beyond that. There's another, there's another copy. Okay, which? Oh, I see that. There, there are two copies. Yeah. Oh. Uh, there's yeah. Earl and Freeman PLC 95 and a half. And there's another one in there that says Earl and Freeman PLC 92 inches. Um, yeah, that's something from when I, I didn't even catch that. That was something from the manufacturer when he sent the new one. He didn't tell me he was going to change the size of the sign. So that might be a typo. Uh, okay. I think that is a typo. We didn't ask him to change the size of the sign. I didn't catch that either, to be honest. So okay. it's, I don't I think mean, that's not, correct. Nothing consequential, but I just thought it may be somebody might want to correct that in the information. Yeah, I'll, uh, I, he might have actually put this into production already, but I will send him an email immediately after saying, uh, you know, make sure that the size was what we requested it to be. Okay, no problem. Does anyone on the committee have any questions, comments, or suggestions? Followed by count. No. Okay, I mean, it's the same size okay. sign, the same location, just the change of name of the business. Mm -hmm. So if nobody has any objections, I will run through the evaluation criteria for the sign. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound to continue. You are in the meeting now. Is there a recording coming through? Uh, that might be there Steph might be who's logging in. There, is that better? Oh, hi, Eric. You're back. Eric by phone, and I had my I could 
hear you guys, but I couldn't see anything. So now I'm on phone. Okay. So, can you hear me? It's Seth. Yes. Yes, I can. So we have Seth in there. Steve, are you still there? I'm, I'm, I am. I was I lost. I lost the video for a moment. It was gone. Okay, we're back. I'll go through the evaluation criteria. Number 1A, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed materials with other properties, acceptable. No landscaping proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, exterior materials acceptable location and appearance of all utilities none no changes proposed in the application recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas including gateway views of the city and state house acceptable conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations acceptable Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details, acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs, not applicable. Illumination, not applicable. Tenants and banners, not applicable. And individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. This sign is acceptable in this location. Can I hear a vote by everyone speaking their name? This is Martha, I say yes. Anna says yes. Seth or Eric, are you Eric, there? Eric says yes, if you didn't get me last time. Okay. That's so good. Okay, and Steve says yes, so it's unanimous. In favor. Um, so, Robin, and I actually I, should, I need to work this into my DRC intro. Um, for this DRC permit, it's an administrative permit. So, Steve is going to fill out a recommendation sheet that goes through all of those criteria he just talked about. Um, he'll sign that. He'll send that to me. I'll send it to you. I just need. At the, at the least an email back to me acknowledging your receipt of that there's no conditions on it so we don't have to you don't have to sign it and affirm that and then i'll issue um, the administrative permit um, and then just bear in mind that there is an appeal period after the permit but this is a sign you're, you're not there's there's no big issues there i don't anticipate anybody appealing you updating your sign okay great thank, thank you, you. you're welcome robin We can move forward to the application for 152 Main Street, Cassandra Coakley for the rooftop solar array. Is Cassandra there or someone for the applicant? Yeah, I'm here, Cassandra Coakley's here. Go ahead and describe your solar panel application. So we are interested in installing some solar panels on the building. I enclosed uh, a photo of the building showing where exactly the solar panels will go. Um, also, I enclosed a photo from Catamount Solar who um, is gonna be doing the job, just um, an aerial view so that you could see what the panels look like. Um, on the front part of the building, yeah, you can see right there. The, this, I asked him, if this was to scale or like what were the exact dimensions of these panels on the building. The front part that's more visible from the road, yes, right there, is going to be about a 10 by 10 area of black on black solar panels. So what that means is that oftentimes you'll see the solar that has the silver um, 
framework that is a little bit more visible. This building has a darker roof, so we thought the black on black would blend in a little bit better, especially um, being in the downtown area. The back part of the building, which is the main array, which is much larger, is going to have 24 panels, so it'll be about um, 20 feet by 23 feet. Um, that's a larger section of roof. If you look at the photo of the building, the front part is really just the one story, but you can see we've got about two stories of coverage on the back, which is a little bit more hidden from the road. Does anyone on the committee have any comments, questions, or suggestions about the solar panel installation? Smooth things killing me. So mounted to the uh, standing seam, Yes. Yes, that's correct. And then the the power is that going to be next to the existing meter, or how does that how does that come into play? Well, the, I'm not sure how they're going to do that. The meters are on the other side of the building, which aren't really visible from the road. So mm -hmm. any you know duct work that they might have to do, I think, would be pretty well hidden, just like the existing um, electrical wires and things are. Right. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any questions? If not, I can go ahead with the recommendation form, the evaluation criteria. Number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Uh, the adaptation of the solar panels and to the standing seam roof seems acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. And recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names one by one, please. Seth Mitchell. This is Martha. I say yes. Anna says yes. Stephen says yes. Derek says yes. Okay. It's approved unanimous. Meredith, do you want to? Yep, sorry, I was just writing, writing no, stuff down. Okay. Um, so, Cassandra, it's going to be the same situation as it was with the prior permit, where I will send you a copy of the recommendation form that Eric just went through, um, and you'll get to see that. And just, you can, you can print it out, sign it, and send it back to me, or you can just send me an email acknowledging your receipt of it, um, and that the, the review is, you agree with the review, and then we'll issue your administrative permit. That's excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much and good luck with your project. Thanks. We're pretty excited. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have anything else at the moment? Otherwise, do I hear a motion to, has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from June the 1st? Um, Eric was not in attendance. Okay. I was not in attendance either. Um, I was, and I 
move to accept them. Do I hear a second, Hannah? Yep, Hannah seconds. All in favor of the June the 1st of minutes, speak your name. Martha, I'm in favor. H Hannah. And Steve in favor. So the minutes are approved by a vote of three to three to zero. Um, Does anyone else have any other business? Meredith, Mike, anyone? No, no. We've got, I actually, I don't even know if we have an application yet for July 6th, but that's three weeks out. So people have two more weeks to get in applications for you. Um, so that next meeting is July 6th. And so we all get a little bit of a break. Okay. Good good. To try a little bit of summer. Oh, and um, just while I've got you on here, and I'll send around something in writing too. Um, for August, we're only going to have the first meeting. Uh, the, we're not going to have two meetings in August. So the August uh, 17th meeting is going to be canceled. Okay. So you, can, you can take a little, little vacation time away from this. <laughs> or better, I can take a long vacation time away from this for a little bit, like a week. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So you know no what? meeting on the 3rd of August. The 7th, 17th. Okay. The second August meeting. Okay. You know, you'll get something in writing as well, but since I had you all here and the decision had been made, I figured I'd let people know as soon as possible. Okay. If no one has anything else, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Eric moves. Do we hear a second? I'll second it. This is Martha. All in favor, speak your name. Martha. Seth, Eric. Hannah. Steve. That's everybody. Okay. Okay. Good. Meeting is adjourned.